Well, welcome everybody. We have an interesting topic today. It's on the idea of forgiveness, which of course brings us, if we do it well, brings us the greatest level of peace. But forgiveness has a lot of definitions and we want to get really deep into it. And I am joined today by Nami Osakabi, who's one of our Optimal EFT course members. And has a lot of experience with this. So Nami, I'm going to bring you on here. Hold on a second. There you are. Say hello. Hi, Gary. Hello, Hi. everyone. All right. So let's talk about, where are you? We lost Nami for a moment. There you are. Sorry, okay. I'm here. That's, that's fine. Um, forgiveness is, is interesting because there's lots of definitions of it, you know. And we're going to enter into something called, or discuss something called true forgiveness. But if, if we could, before we get to that, before we get to that, give me your thoughts, if you would, on where forgiveness fits in the healing, the healing arena. I think forgiveness is the ultimate goal. If you can forgive everyone, everyone you've ever crossed paths with, everyone you will cross paths with, it's the ultimate freedom and peace that you can carry around as you interact with the world. You know, and Nami, I think both of us recognize that at some level. See, these resentments I have, this anger I have about so-and-so, this, all this stuff. You know, we, we, we ruminate on that stuff, you know, and we blame out there. We do all kinds of things because of all this human stuff that we go through. But if we could be completely free of that completely free that's the ultimate in emotional freedom it doesn't dwell anymore you're free to think joyous thoughts you're free to go through your world much more easily yes and you don't <laughs> fear you know interacting with that person that you had a fight with last year or you know that boss that you know fired you or you don't have this fear of as you go about life of oh i might meet that person who i haven't forgiven yet and that resentment and the fear comes up or a family member you know it's it really is the most freeing experience i think to wander the world now, interacting with everyone now the trick is the trick is getting there okay it's one thing to say and recognize that would be nice to have that kind of freedom that kind of peace hooray hooray in fact if we can get get to the ultimate form of that what we're calling true forgiveness and we just have none of that whatsoever and we have only peace it's not a big leap to recognize that with that kind of peace within diseases that we have which tend to be caused you know by our angers and griefs and guilts and <laughs> all that other stuff <laughs> will fade as well you know yes big reason to forgive now Nami, in your experience, how easy is that to do? <laughs> I think you need to practice it. I think it needs to be practiced on a regular basis over and over and over again. And with the help of the unseen therapist, I think it does get easier. But I think true forgiveness is a big place to get to. So I'm not there yet, but I find it's like, the more I practice forgiveness, the easier it is becoming, or the sooner I'm able to forgive aspects. Okay. We will talk about the how-to of the practice here in just a little bit, because we want to give you know, listeners to all this as much um, useful information as they can. Okay. But I want to talk just before that about this true forgiveness we've already talked about, because it's a little different. In fact, it's quite a bit different than the forgiveness that we tend to think of. And so I have, um, actually, I've got an um, article on my website. It's, it's entitled True Forgiveness, actually. And I want to spend a moment just going over that so people have a good sense of what that is. I know you're familiar with it, but others may not be. So let's, let, let's use an example here. Let's assume, Nami, that um, you, uh, in times past, have done something bad to me. You have stolen money from me. 
Okay. You sold it a long time ago. There's a lot of it. And I'm mad about that. You know, I, I've never gotten over that. You just stole it and went off without da, 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 and I talked to you for years and, and I'm carrying resentments about it. I do not have true forgiveness. <laughs> I don't have forgiveness of any kind. <laughs> okay. I, I, I am really mad at Nami for that terrible thing that you did. Okay. Now, this is going to be how the world tends to think of forgiveness. You come to me later and you say, well, Gary, I, I'm sorry. I did a bad thing. Uh, I, I please forgive me. I mean, I, I can't pay you back all the money that I stole, but here's some of it anyway. Okay. And so what happens typically is I say, well, okay. Okay. Nami, I, um, uh, I forgive you. Yeah. I know you were in a bad place at the time and you know, you stole my money and then nah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But let's just, okay. We'll let bygones be bygones. Unless you and I go to a movie or play cards or be friends again in some fashion. Okay. Now, that is what we tend to think of as forgiveness. Would you agree with that, Nami? Yes. Okay. There we have what we think is forgiveness. Now, but I want to get behind that because it's important if we're going to do this job right, if we understand what is behind that and then what true forgiveness really is, because that is not, it may seem like forgiveness, but it's not true forgiveness because if you think about it what's really going on behind that is me the forgiver there's an ego thing going on <laughs> i my my ego is basically saying well okay i magnificent me am, am in my great generosity am going to forgive lowly you for that bad thing that you did so let's be friends okay but my ego is saying, you're lower than me. I'm higher than you. I'm, you know, I'm. Da, da, da. That's not bad. I mean, it's a help. We can now go to a movie. We can now, you know, have some kind of congeniality that we didn't have before. Yay. But Nami, what would happen if you did that? If you stole my money again from me again, have I forgiven? What do you think? It would be dependent on your reaction. <laughs> well, yeah, and my reaction would be, Nami, you did it again. You know, no, 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 no. You know, I haven't forgiven. I haven't. It's not true forgiveness. Not true forgiveness. I've forgiven a bit. All right. I am keeping score in the background. My ego is keeping score. <laughs> okay. Well, that form of forgiveness can be useful, yes, but it's not true forgiveness. Now, we want to turn the page a minute and say, what is true forgiveness? And can we even do it? Well, true forgiveness is completely forgetting that it even happened. Recognizing what our quantum physicists have been telling us for years and what thousands of people with spiritual experiences have been telling us that in the spiritual dimension, in the other world, if you will, that's what our real reality is. There's a oneness that is our true reality and we are unaware of it. But in that true one, in this experience we're having here compared to that true oneness is like a, dream. We're in a dream. It is a fiction. It isn't real. There is no such thing as separation. All of this you will learn if you read my book, The Unseen Therapist, and links to that are in the essential links below this video. So if we, if we recognize it's really a dream and nothing is happening, it isn't really going on, that's what true forgiveness is. It didn't even happen. It's all part of a dream. Now, is that realistic to do, Nami? <laughs> I think that's the ultimate goal. If we can look through the eyes of the unseen therapist and realize that everything is perfect, everything happened as it should. And 
by doing work with the unseen therapist, like she shows me that if, if I hadn't stolen money from you, Gary, then you may not have learned valuable lessons of how there are so many things that are more important than money or valuable understanding that can occur from what's go gone on, you know, from the eyes of the unseen therapist, she sees it as perfect. She sees it as meant to be. She sees it as you've asked me to come take your money the first time. And because you didn't learn perhaps all you needed to, she asked me to do it again so that you can, do, you can learn the lesson again, or you could get triggered again. So you could bring up those fears of losing money and heal those fears, right? From the eyes of the unseen therapist, like it's really truly a gift, right? And if you can recognize that and move into this true forgiveness of realizing like, oh, this is exactly what was meant to happen so that I could heal, you know, my fear of losing money, my, my anger against people who take advantage of me. Like if you can look at it through her eyes, then you truly move into true forgiveness where you realize, wow, there really is nothing to forgive because I have gained so much healing and wisdom from this experience, right? Sure. And that's another way to look at it. Yes, 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 yes. Looking at it through the eyes of the unseen therapist is another way to approach, approach true forgiveness. Now, as a practical matter, and maybe Nami, you're an exception, but as a practical matter, I've never met anyone who has really achieved true forgiveness that has just forgotten the whole thing and so on. The ego still comes up and plays and gets in the way. Uh, am I right? Correct? Would you oh, the ego is very clever <laughs> and will always, I think, bring up reminders, bring up those fears, bring up, yeah, why you shouldn't have forgiven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Look at what they did. Shame. And on and on and on and on it goes. So as long as we're in this human experience of seemingly being separated and not part of the oneness that is actually there and outside of our awareness, how do we get there? Well, we got this metaphor that we call climbing the stairway to miracles. And the very top of that is complete enlightenment and let us equate that for our purposes here, true forgiveness. You get to true forgiveness as though this experience here is nothing but a dream. And once you wake up from it, you go, what was that? Okay. And then all the atrocious things that may have happened, happened in a dream and, you know, let's get on with it. Okay. Because you've woken up to the higher level. Well, we need to get to the higher level. And so that's where the practice comes in. We have a whole course for that, okay? Maybe you could um, give us a little sense, because I know you have, you have uh, been able, with lots of practice, by the way, been able to communicate with unseen therapists, that is, be more involved with the oneness state, the spiritual dimension, than you did when you first came into this. Can you give us a little bit of a comparison of a before and after from where you're coming from on forgiveness? Absolutely. When I started forgiveness, it sounds great, but in practice, it's hard to do. So the unseen therapist is called on to help. And initially, I think for forgiveness, it is, it's trying to understand what's come up for you, right? In, in specific events that we talk about. So we go back, oftentimes it's childhood. So maybe a specific event with my father will come up and forgiving him in that, in that event. So that's where I started from, right? Working on specific events in that event, can I come to more forgiveness? And the unseen me, therapist. I'm sorry, I was gonna interject something. May, yeah, may I ahead. for a moment? Yes. On, the, on the specific event thing. That is one of the major tools that we teach people and teach them well to use unseen therapists with because we can take a specific event, an argument, for example, or something that happens where we get angry or other kinds of emotions, guilty or whatever, and we can bring an unseen therapist on that very specific event. And we can collapse that if we do it well. We can collapse that like it, almost like it never happened. The sting is gone. The, the, I got to get you for this phase 
maybe not completely, totally, 100%, but big time, often. And the more you do that, the more specific events you do, ah, the freer you become. The higher you go up those stairway to miracles to enlightenment. You're not all the way there, but ah, more peace, more peace, more peace. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Please continue. So with specific events, the unseen therapist would come in and initially it was just asking her to bring light to it, to bring ease to it. Cause I would be in that, in that event, I was so angry. I was so fearful, whatever the emotion was coming up. So she would help to ease it. But as I began to practice, it wasn't just that she would start to provide me with the other person's perspective, right? How the other person grew up and was raised and how they may not have, you know, had the tools to provide parenting in a more loving and kind manner or understanding of it through her eyes, right? How she saw it, how that was an important part of my childhood to overcome or whatever the reasons. So she started to, as you practiced, she started to add more, more understanding, more perspective to it. And that provided more healing. And as I worked on more events and more events and more events, it really started to look at like tabletop issues you call, right? Global issues, like looking at, I'm not lovable. I am not worthy. I was able to start really addressing some huge issues that all these events cre had created. And so that was sort of the next step of collapsing like major, major like themes in my life of I'm to be abandoned, right? Like I'm, yeah, not lovable. And so people should abandon me, right? Really big global yeah. issues that I'm still working on, mind you. However, it's, it's amazing how she's helped to really start to clear and bring peace to a lot of events. And then as I practiced and I practiced, I'm able to come to a point where I recognize when I get triggered in the moment and I realize, oh, I still haven't forgiven this person. <laughs> I am triggered by them. I'm upset. I want to blame them for this anger that I have. I, instead of, you know, yelling or creating a conflict, I ask the unseen therapist to come in. As soon as I have time to, I ask the unseen therapist to come in and we bring healing to what's coming up in me. And so it's not that I have true forgiveness of everyone, but I'm getting faster at moving from resentment and anger and bitterness in the moment that's been triggered to moving towards peace. Yeah. And then I'll get triggered again. And then I work for peace. So that's the practice. Sure. And so it goes. But the beautiful thing about that, and you've talked, you've brought that up in what you were saying, is that when you learn to communicate with an unseen therapist well, which is a practice kind of thing, but anybody, anybody can do it, by the way. It's a matter of whether you want to dedicate yourself to get this practice in, and we give you the tools for that in our courses and so on. But when you're asking unseen therapist, and you're really there, she started, as you discussed, starts to show you things about the other side of it, starts to give you understanding about it. And to me, the idea of understanding is a really, really useful step towards forgiveness and true forgiveness. If we truly understand where someone's coming from, you know, I have lots of examples of, of um, clients and students, etc., who are resentful big time about their abusive parents. But once we start to get into this and bring peace and understanding into it, we start to recognize those parents, ooh, the, their background was abusive. Their background, they have a lot of anger. Their background was filled with rejection and so on. They, and they don't know how to handle it because they never are doing what you're doing. That is to, to bring peace inside and, and so on. And so with that understanding, now the I'm angry at my father for whatever or mother or brother or whatever to, oh, I can leave it be. I can leave it be. There's a lot of peace in that. There's a lot of freedom in that. And that's where we go. Okay. Anything else you want to add, uh, Nami? No. I just wish everyone luck on their journey of practicing <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> All right. Well, 
okay, forgiveness. I'll give a forgiveness hug to everybody. You can do the same yeah. if you want to. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we'll see everybody next. We'll see everybody next time. Thank you.